to last time, and this time it's going to be a Takaru. So we are the 10th of July. On our way back to Earth. So, Hathaway! Gives his uh, son the big slap, starts to lecture him, like, like what would Shaman and your mother say? It's because you spent a lot of time in the simulator, you think you're hot shit? He's like, damn, you want to get Kess back? i got to get Kess back. Oh, this guy, like, Kess has been manipulated by Shaw and she's, and he's bad, he's a bad dude, and it's fucked. So I'm going to get her back, because I have the way you're going to... And then... Cats comes in and is like, Captain Bright, don't! Hathaway is alright! I'll look after him, I'll make sure he doesn't die! It's like, don't do anything that your mother regret. Alright. And then, uh, Cats says how he knows all about, um, dealing with, uh, like being in love with a girl who's been ensorcelled by an older man. Because the whole Sarah and Sirocco thing. But, I mean, Cats, you fucking died. <laughs> Because of that. I mean, not in this, but you definitely fucking died because of that. And then Armory's like, dang it. These boys. Cats and Hathaway are good friends. And Shark. Why are you doing that shit to Kess? It's fucked up. And here's Hibiki. Hibiki lost to Camille in the simulator, so he's making food for everybody. And the bet was whoever loses makes dinner. And uh, Koji and uh, Sosuke lecture Hibiki on his combat skills and how good the Zeta is, and now uh, it's amazing. Pooh Amaro is a great part. Yeah, and they talk there. Yeah, and he says, uh, Hibiki's not a career soldier. Um, Z-Blue's pilots are in a whole other class, but he'll get there one day. I had to wait. Maybe you should go in the simulator sometimes. Giving him the pilot lecture, talking about the Rock Island. A line-by-line -line translation? I don't got a line-by-line -line translation, unfortunately. I've got I've got bits of stuff that's line by line, like I've got uh, a lot of ace conversations and a couple of big D trader things that I've got Mune to do. But um, other than that, I've just got the stuff that um, is on Game Facts and stuff that came Blue River did in his things that I've then like rewritten to read better and flow better because his English is his first language. Yeah, and while they're all talking about their piloting skills and it's all a bunch of shit, let's see if there's anything. To, yeah. Um, Yeah, um, and Tanegawa here is like, anyway, here, this is how you, he's like this, and this, and there, boom, done, that's how you peel potatoes. It's like, nice work, Tanegawa, she's like, hell yeah, and Ginny's like, oh my god, preparing food? This is incredible. What's up, Ginny? He's like, this must be the power of the rare Igura. And then, C2, um, says, uh, oh, now, now, Jin, don't stare at ladies or you'll be mistaken uh, for um, liking somebody. And then she's like, ah, oh, shut up. And as he waves his knife at her, accidentally, uh, he cuts C2. And he's like, Jin, jeez, what's up with that? Calm down, dude. He's like, dude, I'm sorry, the I, the knife, it slipped. And he's like, C2, dang, you get your She's like, hey, it's fine, I'm a quick healer. And she's like, there you go, see? No harm, no foul, Jin, but be careful. And Jin's like, what the heck? This power of extreme regeneration. Is that the rare Igura? And then Mao and Misado are completely drunk. She mummy. And it's like, oh, guy, you guys are drunk again. And they're like, ha, 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 we're not that drunk. And Jin is like, wow, these women are totally different when they're drunk. And it's like, oh, yeah, Jin, oh, yeah, no, lovey, dovey. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should spend some time with Asuka. And then he's like, no, nah, it's fine. Jin likes you know how He's like, oh, jeez, he's going to get a girlfriend. Why, do I, why does no one pick me? And then Susan is like, all right, you two. Again, 
you should go do your shit in private. And like, oh, jeez, Susan A's telling us off too now? Bleh. And then Mal's like, jeez, we only had a beer. One case. It's like, jeez, you gin, don't learn from these bad women. They're bad. He's like, hoo hoo, gin, hoo hoo. And then again, he's like, wow, they're so different when they're drunk, but they're still master strategists. Is this the power of the rare Agura? Oh, they're the land of virgins? I mean, Jin was literally the last person to be born there, and there's no women, because they all went infertile and died. Like, there's no female life at all, plants, animals, insects, anything. So, pretty much, yeah. And then Clan comes over in giant form, and Jin is like, wow! She's like, it's alright, I'm a Zentran, we're just these it's bigger right? he's like oh okay he's like it's alright it's fine I ain't gonna hurt you nothing he's like damn some of them can change size as well is this the power of the rare Agira and then Ray comes over w w what is it what are you the Shinji w what do you mean answer me a uh, friend and then she smiles and walks off and then Jin's like what, what was that about I don't understand rare Agiras at all and then uh, Shinji says that it's rare Ray to talk to other people, and uh, so Ray must uh, like Jin and be friends with him. And then Kain comes over and is like, this is bullshit. He, Shinji, stop talking to him. He's a goddamn spy. And he's like, my name is Ad uh, Admiral Jin... Uh, uh, Hadar... Uh, Hadar... No, um, Badabiao. Yeah, it's, uh, Adbarajin Badabiao, or whatever, but its name is ridiculous to say, and that's why they shortened it to Jin. like, I'm an element, I've got a lot of power. He's like, yeah! Neo Diva computer is, he had its data change, we've got evidence of that bullshit. He's like, Dankai, and Jin's got element powers. You saw that, right? So he's, like, he's an actual element. And then he's like, I see visions. That's my element power. I see visions of the future, and, um, uh, yeah, he sees, uh, he continues to have nightmares and, um, about a giant cyclops. And he thinks it's Jin. And then Takaru, Shodoro, come over and are like, Hey, dude, no, he's a good boy, actually. He has proved himself multiple times. And then Kain's like, I'll prove he's a spy. He's like, yeah, that is a real jerk. And then Wada comes over and is like, Shodoro, Shodoro, what, what, what is it? Need your help, dude. But Jin's no cycle. Well, he only ever walks around with one eye revealed. And the dreams are metaphors. Like he has the dream of the the uh, mournful wedding, where it's Mikono and somebody getting married, but everybody's all dressed in black, and there's loads of weird crosses and shit everywhere. But. It's for Shikishima, the not crazy one. Talking with uh, Simon. Simon has taken Shodoro to investigate meteorites for any uh, um, evidence on alien civilizations. And Maki is here. He's like, oh yeah. And Captain Tanaka is gonna help too, because he's a big dragon boy. Dragon's Hive loves looking at ancient shit. So, Simon's gonna get to drilling, while Takaru uses his psychic powers to give him the info and guide his drill. So he's like, uh, yeah, 10 meters that way, 12 meters that way, and then 2 meters that way. Got it. And then Andy's like, hell yeah, this is amazing. I love holes drilling, baby. See, because you're not being crazy. No, he's like, he's definitely not. Like, he's he's not, because he's not the, the ghetto one. He's a, he's a reasonable man. And like I said, the James the Metaphor thing. And he's like, well, he's like, hell yeah, three dudes digging a hole. It's good shit. Three. Wow, he's like, yeah, hell yeah. One dude. Yeah, so he's like, one dude, um, Shinji, like he says, Ikari. Uh, and then, I don't know, he says for the second one, then he says, Amada, and the third one, Jin. He's like, wait, what? Okay, no, I think he says me, uh, Amada, and Jin, the three of us. What should we do? We're the three, yes. He's like, we're the three musketeers. We're the three hole brothers. Hell yeah, we love holes. And you know how he's like, Jin, you, you, you 
like holes or whatever. And Zanka's like, damn, you can't just d d ask a dude that. And Zanka's like, damn, yeah, that's because like, damn, you know how's got that power. It's like, oh, Sam, you found anything? He's like, yeah, we found this thing. We found a capsule. And inside the capsule is a sleeping boy. There's two Shikajimas, yeah, yeah, there's the ghetto one who's old and crazy and is dead. And there's this one who's from Tetsujin. He's a totally different dude. One of them is a weird old dude with like a big burn on his face who's crazy and dead. And this one looks like um, Bruce Campbell. And is um, Mackie's dad, Choro's girlfriend's dad. It's like, damn, this capsule, what the heck's got a boy in it? Let's investigate. Like they even did a bit last game where um, the ghetto one is like, he's like, ah, Shotaro, I'm your girlfriend's granddad, I'm related to him. He's like, what, really? He's like, you're gullible, of course not, you fucking idiot. He's got the same name, you joker, why would he be related? Just because we both professors got the same name. So, Shikoshima here explains that the um, capsule uh, is a cold sleep device and it is definitely, absolutely, over 12,000 years old. And Hibiki's like, damn, that's like during the Stone Age and that doesn't add up with technology. They definitely didn't have, like, suspended animation capsules. So, it's like, damn, you saying it's got to be an alien capsule? You Chujin? An alien capsule? It's like, I, mean, I guess it's got to be. And uh, Will says that the... Um, Cold Sleep thing has uh, been uh, um, was unlocked, and the lock was set to release at this time. So that's very suspicious. Like, damn, we got there just in time. Otherwise, that dude would have invented into space. And then it opens up, and now comes the boy. Whoa, what the heck? He's like, oh, who are you? What the boy? I'm Gura. How are you doing? It's like, wow, you're Gura. He's like, all I remember is my name. This is scenario 26. Um, Prince of Darkness? Yeah, Prince of Darkness. Yummy, you know, whatever Prince is. And then, you watch that one, and that one. So here's Gura and Shoda and Gura are having a good time and Shoda's like, hell yeah dude, we'll show you around Earth when we get there, it's brilliant. And then, like, no need. He's like, what? I've already um, researched on my own and Earth is quite pathetic. Yeah, there you go. It's, and so Gura and Wada's like, hey, what the hell? What's up with that, dude? What the heck? Saying Earth sucks? Like, dang, what? what's up? He's like, hey, Taku, Guru just said Earth sucks! And he's like, well, it isn't very good. Oh, and then, just like, stop it, Wada. Now listen, Gura, Earth's a lot more special than whatever you read, alright? And Taku's like, that's right, Gura, Earth's actually good. He's like, we'll see. And then, alarm goes off. And you get attacked by Yuji! And obviously, Fox Sweeper says that the blue is scramble. And off we lunch! So like, here we go. And now he's like, damn, these guys seem to be off the Dragon's Hive. And what is like, yeah, maybe they're going after Gura. And sure, and then sure, like, don't worry, Gura, it's fine. We'll protect you because you're our friend. Ah, okay, sure. Shut up. And then let's go get him. And but what's up, Taku? He's like, I got a bad feeling about this, which is sort of a catchphrase of his. And within three turns, we need to defeat enough dudes while also not letting Dragon's Hive take any damage. Yeah, like, he can't just, like, run away, can he? 
Um, defeat all the enemies within three turns without Dragon's Hive taking any damage. Sure. Get any look at these. Okay. Go. Easy peasy. I can even move it to over here. Fuck you, then, dude. Good. Yeah, maybe I'm not that good. Because maybe that dude's ever so slightly too far away to fight. Oh shit, no, he's fine. He's fine, he's fine, we got it, we got it. Is that cruel so Star Wars fan? No. He just gets bad feelings about things because he's psychic. There's a thing later on where he says I got a bad feeling about this. And um, then he says, oh, is that your famous psychic powers? And he goes, nah, just experience with hanging out with these jokers. <laughs> Something bad always happens. Glockenspiel. Is there any instrument mightier than the Glockenspiel? Yeah, like 50 of them, but it's still good. Yeah, okay, and because Short Row is such a low level, uh, they should level up, like, every time. So as long as they keep killing both dudes, these two jokers can keep going for a long time. I got it! Hit! Wow, that's good. Couldn't even kill that dude, so never mind about those dudes going forever, because they're fucking trash. Not moving the fucking boat. You can't fucking make me. Sweat, you need to try and move that boat one more fucking time. Right, elements, please. Mikono. The sword one isn't actually any faster because she doesn't have dash. I love Jill Knowles, that's what she said. That is definitely what she said if she is uh, Runa. Every translation thing I've got, except for one, is available for everybody. And also, like, the shit that Mew's done. But I am contemplating tidying up all of them, like, getting all of the Ace Conversations. Um, and then posting them somewhere. So, that's a thing. 
you might have to ask the moon how he feels about that. Just because like, I'm doing literally none of the work. Except fucking putting it into a picture file so you can look at it. And reading the damn thing. But that ain't anything really, is it? But he's gonna be a busy bee when it comes to part two because th there's nothing for any of those. Like, at least I had all the things that um, Kim would have already done. boy. After I've done this next move and the animation starts playing, guess what? I'm probably gonna drink some more. No, fuck off, dude. I don't believe Kiriko fucked it. By Kiriko, I mean definitely Shako jacked it up. Okay, so after this stage, it's the the big Aquarian stage, and I gotta get the destiny point with Jin. And then it's the raffle time. So hold on to your fucking butts. Also, I I did the thing where I got a video of you and a hug going, no! Because I love every noise she makes. Name a noise that she makes, and damn, I love it. It's like a cool is She's in uh, Planet and she sings the the ending song for Planet. I believe she is the one who did s sings about the Dango. Hair, violet slash orange. Nailed it. Unusual features: multicolored eyes and hair. Always carries around a frog doll. It's a cat. Shit. Since she's a fucking cat, it's a cat. <laughs> Pretty sure Jin will live. I don't know why. I don't know why nobody's believing Rocky guy in it. He's fucking dead. I 
that's good DXD if you do that. Urzu Seven, Sento Kaisu. She's oh, she's Chris in Cross Hands. There you go. Rom in the Neptune animation, apparently. That's fucked up. I don't like that. She's in the Ultra Super Anime Time. Apparently, that's a thing. It exists. She's Beelzebub. Oh, shit. She's Beelzebub in the fuck thing. Where they wanna fuck all the time. And the driver ready. Oh, she's in Star Wars 5. So you can't get free to cut on what song and then she sings the, the regular Aquarian song in the OVA where Evol and regular Aquarian fight and Apparently, apparently she's from, uh, yeah, so Aquarius, Neo Kowloon. Not that fucked up. Um, like you can save Guy Guy Daigoji in the desk and like him dying is like basically the only reason that a lot of the shit happens in the desk but then he shows up yeah, Jin does Jin die. Let's have a look. It does Jin die. Like, so sometimes really important people get to live. Like, Four. Four's death is hugely important to Camille, but she's the most savable character of all fucking time. She's savable more times than um, she fucking automatically dies. Okay, 
the Super Robot was. Uh, oh, they're too close, you can't dunk on them. Okay, yeah, he dies episode 13. Yeah, and Jin is uh, analogous to Jun from the original Aquarian. He loves idols because he loves Alicia and he's good with technology. And his name's Jin instead of Jun. I'm gonna plug in a thing. So Not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. Did the old electricitums on him. So I hated it for a second. So hold up. Well, I. Uh